going on? It's the uh, Chris and Caleb team live. It is the second Friday of the month, and that's when we get on here to talk to y'all. So um, <clears throat> we're here for you. I'm here with did my you business. Just say, you just said y'all. We're I from did. the Northeast. I'm not sure if you're allowed to say I'm that. sorry. I was in Texas last week and then Kansas yesterday, and that's how they speak. Did they so say y'all in Kansas? I think so. Okay. Guys. We'll and, go with that. It's kind of Midwest, but I don't know. Right. A little bit. A little bit. Um, cool. So it's, uh, it's November. November 17th, we've shared this on our business page. We have a wonderful, awesome event that we have coming up that we would love to see you there. We still have a few slots open. Uh, you wanna tell people what we're doing? Yeah, so we have a cool event coming up. We are gonna be doing, uh, for the kiddos, we're gonna have a story time with Santa, and then we're also gonna be giving away free pies. Yep. Uh, and the pie giveaway, I mean, for those of you who are busy, slash lazy this is an amazing <laughs> event because you can come get a free pie at our event and then you can bring it to thanksgiving which will be just a couple days uh, later we have a professional santa not just caleb dressed up with a yeah, beard yeah i'm too skinny to be santa <laughs> and he, your beard's not yeah, white enough or, or same with your hair off. Uh, so we have a professional photographer as well, and uh, Bakers of Buffington, shout out to them. They're going to be uh, bringing the pies, uh, so please sign up for that. Um, also, and I didn't talk to you about this in the prep, um, we have a, uh, a client of ours, a past client, who just found out uh, some really, really bad news, um, uh, and I would really love it if you could, all I'll say is that if you could pray for Julia, um, she's a three-year-old and a sweet girl and would really love it if you could pray for Julia and her family. Um, so that's all I'll say. I just know that um, really kind of wrecked my heart earlier. So I would really appreciate it if you guys could do that. So with that said, um, let's talk about the market. Caleb, how's the market? Do you know? Well, do you sell it's homes? <laughs> I do. I do. I do. I, I, here's one thing I do know. Yeah. Gary Keller, the founder of our company, says it is always a great time to buy the right That's piece right. of real estate. That's true. So we'll unpack that a little bit. We'll talk about uh, some of the challenges that you're up against right now, whether you're a buyer or a seller. Every market has its share of deals. Every market has its share of challenges. And so we're going to kind of dig into that a little bit more, help educate you so you're better prepared to kind of know what to expect. So overall, you know, I would say that the overall the market is slowing. Okay, it's seasonally slowing, which it usually does this time of year, but it's also, um, there is a slowdown. I mean, year over year, we, we've talked about this uh, the last couple of months that uh, we've been feeling it. Like there's, there's less sales happening. I talked to a lot of top producing agents and they're saying, man, I haven't sold, you know, slowing or showings have slowed down, sales right. have slowed down, um, and that's a very big sign that things are shifting. And there are some numbers in there that are showing up, yet, there, a lot of agents that I talk to are like, oh, it's fine. It's been a great year. I can't wait for next year. But um, right. it, it, it is slowing. What, yeah. And, well, anytime you have the market starting to cool, first of all, it's nothing to panic about. It no. doesn't mean you can't sell your house. doesn't mean it's a bad time to buy. None of that stuff. Anytime the market cools and all markets are, are cyclical, it's just going to happen. Yes. Um, you know, we need to make sure... There, there's always the people's perception of the market and then there's the reality of the market and there's a lag between when the market starts to cool and when people actually realize that it's starting to cool. So right. what we're having to you know, talk to clients about now is that, hey, it is less of a seller's market than it has been in right. a lot of cases. However, this is the time where if you're thinking about selling your house, you really need to lean on an expert who knows that specific market. And here's why I say that. So something that we pay close attention to when we're working with a prospective seller is helping them understand what's going on in their school district and in their price range. Mm -hmm. And so what we do is we calculate an absorption rate. It sounds really fancy and complicated. All it basically is saying is, look, here's how many homes are on the market in a given school district and price range, and here's how many are selling on average per month, okay? And so we're gonna be able to tell you know, how long it's going to take, what is the velocity of that market. Like and that so one. you might be hearing in some areas, oh yeah, the market's cooling. Well, some pockets might still be moving along and, and clicking along really, really well and mm -hmm. selling fast. Yeah. Other areas might have been a buyer's market for a long time and people just don't have that perception and don't understand that that's the case. So this is the time when you need to lean on a professional that knows how to calculate an absorption ratio and is going to use that information to help you determine how you're going to price your house appropriately. 
Yeah, and I would add to that, you know, I like that word velocity. I think that's a really good way of, of, of looking at the market and how fast right. is it moving mm -hmm. or, or not. And you know, I always tell people the absorption rate is, is if no new homes came on the market today, how quickly would you technically sell out of homes, right? right. And the last year, we've been under four months. Right. Um, it's been like a little bit above three months, uh, between 3.2 and like 3.8, and which that, you know, a, a balanced market is around six months, give or take, you know, there might be some margin on either side, but like that tells us that there's just across Chester County, there's some places where it's a month, there's other places where it might be five months. So, um, in, in nine months in some price ranges, right. and that's some, true. I mean, it, price ranges it can be matter even too. longer than that in some areas and price ranges, right? As well, so. so, you're talking about having an expert. Um, next to you. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk specifically about what sellers need to pay attention to and buyers need to pay attention to. But before I say that, you, you, how do you know what are the qualifications or what are the criteria? If, if you were no longer in real estate and you had to hire a realtor, how would you know they're an expert and would be appropriate in a given market like this to hire? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, what I talked about absorption rate, I think that's a question that, you know, you would, I, I would ask that because I know that most, most people who are out there selling their houses are not asking me about absorption rates. Right. I'm giving them that information, though, to help them, you know, help them make good decisions about, you know, selling their house and that kind of thing. But how do you pick a good real estate agent is basically what you're asking. I mean, yeah. What I, are think the I think reputation is really big mm -hmm. that, you know, somebody that, you know, one of your friends or family members has worked with in the past mm -hmm. and has had, you know, a favorable, favorable experience with them. I think that's huge. Mm -hmm. And I think also somebody, you know, that is selling a lot of homes. Mm -hmm. um, the number of homes that they're selling, um, while, the, while that's not actually super, super important to in the number of transactions an agent or a team has completed, not in how long they've been in the business. Yeah. Because you know there are agents out there that have been in the business for 25 years and they've sold five homes a year for 25 years. That's way less experience than somebody who's selling you know, 100, 150, 200 homes a year. And what they're going to know to be able to get, guide you mm -hmm. is you know, what's gone wrong, mm -hmm. right? Because that's when that's when you really need a real estate agent. When everything is going perfectly and everything is going according to plan, yeah. a real estate agent is really not that valuable. It's when you know crap is hitting the fan, so to speak, when you have a failed septic system and you have to go negotiate that or you have a stucco issue you know, that has to be figured out. It's like being able to lean on somebody who has that expertise mm -hmm. to get you through that experience, to get you the best deal possible, and um, you know, uh, to get you to sell. I would say a good real estate agent should help the process go in such a way that you don't even know there are issues. You know, now there's some issues you need to know about, but they basically you have a stucco or right? septic issue, you're going to know you have yeah, them. Yeah, you are. That, and, <laughs> but yes, yeah, yes. that's I, I, I know. Yeah. I'm just, I'm they just help the pro process to go smoothly, yeah. but uh, at the same time, it's like yeah, you, you're not going to feel like you you need them until something's going wrong. Um, right. And so you know, and, and you're, to your point, I mean. You know, look, if you've been in the business a long time, you've seen a lot of change, but it, it's that it's that velocity. I'm going to go back to that word, velocity of mm -hmm. sales, because if, if if you're very in tune with what's going on in the market, you notice the moment things start to slow down, which I know that we have this year. We're like right in the middle of, or beginning of September. It was like things really sl slowed down. And I don't know whether people were just waiting for the election or whatever, but we've noticed that right away. Um, and it was because we had a lot of listings and, you know, we have 20 some listings right now and, and we can see that very clearly across the county. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So <clears throat> what specifically do sellers need to be aware of heading into this um, cooler market? What, what yep. do they need to realize they if they're going to sell? They need to know what the absorption ratio is in their area and then plan accordingly mm -hmm. based on that. So if we, I'm sitting down with a client and I look at an absorption ratio and there's less than two months supply of inventory, well, we're still in a seller's market, mm -hmm. right? And so in a seller's market, we price ahead of the market, which means, I'm just gonna throw some examples sure. out there. Yeah. If all the homes in the neighborhood or in the surrounding area that are similar, all the comparables, are selling for 400, you know, between 400 and 425, we might list the house for 435. Mm -hmm. We're pricing ahead of the market, which means, hey, look, we're trying to beat the last person that sold, mm -hmm. we're trying to get a little bit more for them, right, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is, or not the problem, the thing you also have to pay attention to is 
in a market that is declining, mm -hmm. we still need to price ahead of the market. It's just the other Oops, direction. Right. Yeah. It's the less fun direction if you're a seller, <laughs> more fun if you're a buyer. So what that means is if I'm having a consultation with a client who's looking to sell their house and we do the research and we find out, oh, there's nine months of inventory or 12 months of inventory or 14 months of inventory, well, we need to look at the last couple sales and we need to price it less than mm -hmm. what those sold mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if we don't do that and we price it where the other sales were in a declining market, we're gonna be caught chasing the market yep. and we're gonna to have to keep cutting the price, cutting the price, cutting the price, and that is just not right. a good way to, to go about it. Yeah. So. Well, and, and I think I'll go back to something you said earlier, Caleb, which is um, you know, when you're, when you're chasing that market down, if, if, you're not, if you aren't staying ahead of that, um, appropriately enough, and your your agent doesn't have the cojones to talk <laughs> truth to you. Uh, maybe they're afraid of like I don't know, maybe upsetting you or something like that. It's like it, you're. I've seen it where when I first got in the business in 2007, 2008, folks went from they could have sold for 650 and they ended up selling for 450 because they chased the market down for a few years. Right. And it's like they, you know, it's like you, you can't. You've got to have the the ability to speak truth. And we know sellers aren't going to want to hear that. It's a very hard discussion to right. have. And it's you've got to have the data to back it up. And the agent has to be able to explain it or put it in a way that they understand it. Because what's at risk here? It's probably at least. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars. Because if you're pricing ahead of the market on the top end, maybe you're five, ten thousand above. But if you're on the other end, it's maybe five, ten below. So there's a gap there that right. you really have to trust your agent and know without a shadow of a doubt they know what they're talking about. So it's right. a very important thing to have that expertise on your side. So, um, anything to add on the seller side? No, I don't think so. All I right. mean, I, you know, it's an interesting time in the real estate. I, I will add one thing, and this is not seller specific. What I would say is, you know, it is a fantastic time to, it, like I said earlier, it's always a great time to buy the right piece of real estate. It's going to get easier and easier to find the right piece of real estate when it comes to investment standpoint. Yeah. Yeah. So now is a fantastic time. If you have some money that's been sitting on the sidelines that you're looking to invest, it may make sense to really start looking in earnest now for some great investment opportunities yes. because you are going to see more and more deals popping onto the market that you wouldn't have been able to get yeah. you know, in the last couple of years. So there's Absolutely. an opportunity there. Yeah, and prices have been driven up recently, and, and with that slowdown, it's like, okay, you're going to be able to start to get some, some better deals. Mm -hmm. So switching over to the buyer side, what does all this mean for buyers? Well, it's good news for buyers um, just because, I mean, unless you're selling and buying at the same time. Um, and, and here's the thing about selling and buying at the same time. If, you, it, like, right. if you're buying something and the prices have been going up or down, it doesn't matter, you're gonna buy it here and you know, you're know you selling your home, it almost, you know, with a rising tide floats all ships or whatever it is mm -hmm. like that, everything's going up and down. So you know, if you're trying to time the market and you're buying and selling at the same time, unless you're buying or selling in a very different geographic area or a different right. type of home, right. you know, whether it's uh, you know, maybe selling in a very expensive luxury market versus downsizing to a medium market, um, that may make a difference. But it's almost a zero output type of sale and, right. or transaction, I should say. But on the buyer side, if you are buying, um, the big thing that you want to look for right now is uh, is your interest rates. Interest rates um, are headed up. They've gone from low fours in the beginning of the year to close. They'll probably end up pretty close to the fives uh, at the end of the year. The Fed is set to meet again, and I, I heard in December. And the rumor is they're going to raise the rates, which is not a mortgage rate. Uh, don't misunderstand that, but those rates do affect mortgage rates, and so it probably will drive it up again. And you know, uh, depending on the price range that you're looking at, the the amount that affects your mortgage payment, like let's say it goes up a quarter of a percent. I mean, it could raise your, your mortgage payment 15 bucks. It could raise it 100 bucks, depending on what type of loan you're taking and, and all of that stuff. So you need to understand the um, implications of the rate changing on your, on your purchase. That's the big X factor. If you don't need to buy, then don't buy. You know? um, but I will say this, you know, looking ahead and over the next couple of years, I don't think it's very unlikely we're going to see 3% again. I, I, you know, don't we're Even don't wait when for you're that. talking about 5 and 6%, I mean, Stupid. people who have bought houses at, you know, 13 and 18%, mm -hmm. you know, in the 70s and 80s are, are kind of laughing at yeah. you right now. Now, um, that being said, I mean, anything under 6% is still a phenomenal yeah. rate historically. We've just been, you know, kind of in a crazy la-la land of right. interest rates in the last couple of years. So. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's been a little crazy. And, and, and the other thing for buyers is to know that 
you know, we used to have uh, this year. It was like, man, I remember getting back into the or getting into the business 2006, 2007. There were a lot of multiple offers then. This beat that by far, and there were a lot of multiple offers this year. And uh, that's the thing that's going to change uh, for the most part. Not everywhere, like Caleb was saying, there's micro right. markets that may continue to have that competition. But um, for the most part, you're not going to be having the crazy competition that we've seen this year, which will be nice because it'll loosen up. Yeah, yeah, it'll loosen up. And so uh, the the only the only thing as a buyer though is to be aware if the prices are headed down and the sellers drop their price already, try to keep up with where the market pricing is. You know, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to negotiate some inspection stuff. But inspections are always difficult to kind of negotiate. You just have to understand what's really important to you in negotiating those inspections. And a good real estate agent will put that into perspective for you. So any thoughts on the buyer side as far as that goes? Nope. Okay, cool. Um, trying to think if there's anything else we wanted to talk to folks about. Anything you can think of? I think we nailed it, Chris. I think we nailed it too. Well, listen, <laughs> really appreciate everybody watching. If you have any questions about real estate, please give us a call. If you're thinking about selling, please, uh, even if it's uh, you know this time uh, no, next year. I did have one thing I wanted to add. Yeah, so. go ahead. So um, the conversations that I'm having with clients that I'm meeting with today that are thinking about selling their homes, uh, a lot of them were planning for 2019 at this point, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I would just encourage people, if you are wanting to sell in spring of 2019, yeah. uh, it would be smart to consult with a real estate agent now. Yeah. And here's why I say that. Yeah. So over the last couple of years, I've had a lot of success with getting my clients' homes on the market earlier than most people do. Mm -hmm. Most people think, oh, I need to list my house in you know April, May, June, mm -hmm. or whatever to be able to sell during the school year. Mm -hmm. So I've had a ton of success with helping my clients get on the market right as soon as the Super Bowl is over. Mm -hmm. And then that's really when the buyers were coming out and getting homes sold quickly and it was working out fantastic. So what I did this past year, I had a number of sellers that were ready to go and just waiting for the Super Bowl to be over. And I said to a couple of them, look, there's no inventory on the market in your area and price range right now. Why don't we just put the house on the market, see what happens. And we had huge success with getting our clients home sold in January as soon as the new year flipped over. What I realized is that a lot of people are deciding as soon as the holidays are over whether they're going to move in 2019. And what happens is if they see a house that matches everything they're looking for, they're running out there looking at it and if they fall in love with it, they'll buy it. Yeah. So you have a great opportunity to get your home sold quickly and for a fantastic price in January, in February, uh, before all that competition comes on the market in March, April, and May. Mm -hmm. and. The other thing I'll say as far as that's concerned, you know, we're kind of getting towards the end of it now. I'm, I, if, when I have clients that are looking to sell in January, we've already taken a lot of their exterior pictures now. Mm -hmm. um, the grass is still kind of green. There's still some, some leaves. leaves left on the trees. Depending a little on what bit. the weather's doing right now. Right. But So you still have an opportunity. Well, I'll guarantee you this. Your house is going to look better on the exterior today yes. than it's going to look in January. That's February. true. That much I know. That's true. So, um, so if you're planning to do something early on in 2019 uh, and you want to talk to us about that, give us a call now. We can still make plans yeah. for that. Yeah, and I would add to that that you know, and I'll talk about buyers in that vein for a second. But you know, just get your ducks in a row. Like, give us a call. Right. We're not pressure people. Like, we'll just give you the information you need to make a great decision and the time you want to make it. And uh, you know, if, if the time is January, great. If it's March, fine. You know, whatever. We're cool with that. Um, we just want to make sure that you have the best situation possible. And I'll say the same thing for buyers. If you're like, oh, we want to buy a home in the spring. Well, guess what? Let's sit down now. Call us. Sit down with one of our buyer specialists. Map out what you're going to do. And God forbid you find out you have an issue with your credit that you need you know, a couple months to fix. Let's say, you know, you need a little bit more savings. Um, and if you have a target for how much you want to save, then maybe it'll help you kind of save a little more during the holidays instead of spending more, maybe. Um, and then, you know, let's say a house does pop up in January. You know, when you were planning on making, taking action in, a, in March, let's say it pops up in January and it's the perfect house and you fall in love with it like you were saying. Well, then you would have missed out on it if you didn't sit down and talk with us for, I mean, right. a buyer consultation, a listing consultation, 45 minutes, give or take. Yeah, you know? and you know, it, look, plant, it's such a big, there's hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake. Yeah. Why not take the time to plan for it properly? Yeah. And that way it's gonna, you're gonna be educated and you're gonna be able to move forward with confidence, right. knowing that you're making the right decision, that you've had time to think about it, nothing was rushed, yeah. nothing was hurried, 
And you know, getting your house ready for the market is a pain. It's yep. um, you know, there's some work involved in that in most cases. And so start making that plan and chipping away at the plan so that you're ready to go when you are ready to get your house on the market and you're not cramming, you know, and trying to get everything yep. done at the last second. That's absolutely right. So uh, with that said, we'll wrap up by saying, hey, you know, I would love to talk to some local vendors, uh, restaurants, uh, service providers, uh, you know, organizations, whether, you know, like I said, restaurants. I don't, we'd love to interview you and have some time with you, promote you. Uh, we want to be experts in the local area. So if you are that business or you know of that business or would make a recommendation, please let us know. Um, caveat there is uh, we really want these folks to share the same uh, type of values that we do as far as integrity and responsibility and gratitude go. So uh, they've got to match our culture well. But uh, if that's the case, then we'd love to partner with you and help you out as you help us. Uh, and with that said, have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Please come. November 17th to the Santa and Pie giveaway. Uh, we would love to see you there. Um, with that said, see you then.